I often say that when it comes to generating leads from your website by using Google Ads, the easy bit is getting someone to see your advert and click on it. The hard bit is how do you get that person, once they've clicked on your ad and come through to your website or to your landing page, how do you get them to take the desired action and convert into a lead by filling in an inquiry form or picking up the phone to you? Well, the good news is that there are various quite simple things that you can change on your landing page which are likely to increase the chances of the visitor converting into a lead. And in this video, I want to uh, give you some examples and real life experiments that I've done of the kind of things you can change on your landing page and also tell you a couple of different ways that you can set up split tests to have two different versions of a page and send half of your traffic to one and half to the other and properly test which page is going to give you the best results over the long term. So the first example I want to tell you about is one of my clients who is a mortgage broker and who has been running Google Ads to generate leads in the bad credit mortgage space. Now when I first started working with them I saw that their original landing page had a number of things which could be improved and which I was pretty sure would uh, increase the conversion rate if we did those changes. So I got their web designer to make a new version of the landing page which had three significant changes. The first was that we put a proper value proposition on the page. So the original page just had a very stark headline that said bad credit mortgages. And if you've watched any of my other videos about the importance of value propositions, you'll know that it's really important to have a headline on the page which tells people where they are, what they can do, and why they should stick around and do it. And that's what a proper value proposition does. And I'll put a link in the description to a video where I talk about that kind of thing in more detail. But basically what we did was on the second version of the page that I got the web designer to create, I wrote a proper value proposition. So instead of saying bad credit mortgages, it had a much stronger value proposition there that was going to draw people in. Uh, the second change that uh, we made was to get rid of the top navigation menu. So there were fewer distractions on the page. And the third change I got the designer to make was to reduce the number of questions on the inquiry form and slightly change the wording of how some of the, how some of the questions were asked. So we then had two versions of the page, the original bad credit mortgage page and my new improved version. And we set up an experiment whereby half of their traffic went to the original version and half went to the new version. And I'll show you now how we, how we set that up and what the results were. So here you can see we've got this ad group in the Google Ads account and it's got two adverts in it. And both the adverts are identical in terms of their headlines and their description lines. And I've actually used the label facility in Google Ads here to label the one that points to the original landing page and the one that points to uh, version two of the page. So the ads have identical content, it's just that the first ad points to page A and the second ad uh, points to page B. And as with any ad group where you've got more than one advert, Google will alternate, you know, it will show some people um, the first ad, some people the second ad, and over time will build up stats for each one. And as you can see over here, um, each ad has had a decent number of clicks. The first ad to the point of the original page had 177 clicks in the time period we're looking at. The one pointed to the new page with my three changes on it had 145 clicks. And they both got roughly the same click-through rate, as you'd expect, because the ad content is, is the same. But this over here is where the difference creeps in. So you can see that the advert pointed to the new page had a conversion rate of 21% compared to the original page was only converting at 11%, so almost double the conversion rate just by changing the headline into a proper value proposition, getting rid of the top menu, and reducing the length of the inquiry form and making the questions on there easier to understand. And that's reflected then, obviously, in the number of conversions that the, the second page generates far, far more conversions. So that's one very simple way to, to test the results, is just have two, have two uh, landing pages and send one ad to page A and one to page B. And after you've gathered enough data, then you can judge the results in, in Google Ads. Uh, the second experiment I've done recently um, uses um, a different tool to test, to test the results. But let me tell you about the experiment itself, first of all. So this experiment was done with a client that is using Facebook ads to generate life insurance leads. And when I started working with them, they had a landing page which was already doing a pretty good job, to be fair, of generating leads. The conversion rate was, was reasonably healthy, but I believe from having looked at the page that there were things which could be changed which would make that conversion rate even higher. 
So I gave their web designer a brief on how to change the design and layout of the page and I rewrote a lot of the content um, and things like that. And so again, we ended up with version A, the original version of the page, and version B. But this time, rather than doing our split test within Google Ads, we used a free tool from Google called Google Optimize, which allows you to take multiple versions of a page and automatically distribute the traffic between the different versions. And over time, it will do the measurement to show which page is the winner. So let me show you uh, the kind of results you get from that. So here we are in the Google Optimize uh, dashboard where we can see the results. And you can see down here, it's got the original version of the page and the, uh, the variation that we did. And for each page, it tells us how many sessions there have been, how many visits there have been to, the, to that page, how many conversions there have been, in this case, how many um, inquiries have been submitted, and therefore what the conversion rate is. And again, you can see that the new page is performing a lot better. It's got a conversion rate of 40%. The original had a conversion rate of 30%. So as I said, the original page was performing pretty well, but the new version that, uh, that we've done is performing even better. And the nice thing about using Google Optimize is it does the statistical analysis for you and tells you whether the results you're seeing at the moment are likely to, you know, to stay the same in the long term. So you can see here, um, it's saying that there's a 96% probability that this page, which is currently the winner, will always perform better. Because obviously what you don't want to do with an experiment like this is judge the results too early. Um, in fact, you can see from the graph down here that if we'd, if we'd judged it just on the first couple of days, um, in the first few days, the new page was actually performing less well than the original. But as time goes on and it evens out, then you actually start to see a proper statistical pattern emerging where we can say that you know consistently um, the new page, which is the blue line here, is always outperforming and is likely to continue outperforming the original. So I hope you found that uh, that useful. Um, there's some ideas there of the kind of things that you can change on a page and crucially a couple of different methods you can use to test the results of your experiments and see whether or not you have a winner. Um, if you want to know more about using Google Optimize, uh, I am planning to do a video shortly on how to actually set up an experiment in Google Optimize. So if you haven't already done so, do um, hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so as you're the first to know when I put out that video or any other new ones. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions or any feedback on anything missed, then do let me know in the comments. Thanks very much. I'll see you again soon.